Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. Today we're gonna revisit an ongoing controversy we've been covering on this channel. This controversy has to do with the United Nations continued meddling with the domestic affairs of Japan. For years, the UN has made a relentless effort to police the anime industry, to push for not only its ban in certain aspects, but criminalization in other aspects as well. Who could forget the UN's push in 2019 to essentially give human rights to anime characters? And no, that's not an exaggeration. The proposed draft law directed at the US and Japan used terminology that would prohibit, by law, child sexual abuse material in any form, including drawings and other forms of fictional content, essentially equating, in a legal sense, abuse against a real child with that of an anime character. Needless to say, the draft law was shot down. This also marked a growing frustration with the UN as a whole. People began asking how they have the nerve to morally and legally condemn fictional content produced in various countries. Meanwhile, their own peacekeepers are roaming the most vulnerable parts of the globe, abusing women and children in massive, systematic scales. This hypocrisy was once again rehashed a few weeks ago, when their specialized division, UN Women, demanded the removal of anime-related ads from a domestic Japanese newspaper. Now, the full details of the story leading up until today can be found in my two previous videos that are linked in the description. But to sum them up precisely, UN Women demanded the removal of this ad from a Japanese newspaper that promoted the most recent manga of the series Tawawa on Monday. A few days later, a Giga Chat appeared. A member of the Japanese Liberal Democratic Party posted this photo to Twitter with the caption, Purchased, holding a copy of Tawawa on Monday manga's fourth volume, a clear jab at the UN. And that's where we left things off, but today I have an update coming out of this once again. There was another person to speak out about the UN's demand, but this time, it went much differently. In a series of now-deleted tweets in Google Docs, Mizuki Kurosawa, the founder of the clothing brand for busty women called Hard Closet, made a series of tweets claiming that the manga Tawawa on Monday is not erotic, and that UN women is essentially body-shaming bustier women and characters. In a later and also deleted Google Doc, she stated that she related to the character because of her large breasts, something she feels is misunderstood and unfairly sexualized in many cases, much like how the UN has equated large-breasted fictional characters with real-life CP. However, her tweet would receive backlash from Japanese Twitter users claiming that she is supporting the sexualization of children in general. And unfortunately for her, she made the one mistake you can never make when faced with cancel culture, and that's apologize. In her follow-up tweet and Google Doc, she apologized, stating that while she relates to the character Ai Chan from Tawa on Monday, she did not condone the sexualization of minors, presumably anime characters included. But all that apologizing and backtracking only made things worse. The crowd was not pleased. The harassment continued until three days ago, where she announced on Twitter that she's taking legal action against malicious postings against her and her company, including defamation and obstruction of business. Due to language barriers and the fact that most related tweets are deleted, it is unclear exactly who these suits are being launched against, but I think this serves as a great lesson. That when cancel culture is forcing you to apologize, giving in only makes things worse. And not even Japan is immune to that. But that's the latest update regarding the fallout of the UN Women's Request. I hope you all enjoyed. Subscribe for more daily videos, and yeah, I'll see you guys next time.